If you want to know what one of the number one forehand killers are, I'm going to show you in this video. This is an insidious forehand killer and it's so crazy because it gets taught to you in the beginning and a lot of times it completely destroys your game in the sense that it keeps showing its head the entire time as you play. And you want to know what that forehand killer is? It's the dreaded T. What I mean by this, if you're an advanced player, you may be suffering from the dreaded T. If you're a beginning player or an intermediate player, you probably do suffer from the dreaded T. And what I mean by this, the dreaded T means this is how you learn to start to play the game. Okay? You probably went, maybe took a lesson or you saw somebody, and the dreaded T has you start like this. And the problem with the dreaded T is this. It provides you with no power, no consistency. So if you go take a lesson or you're starting and taking your racket back, even if you do the dreaded T like this, where it's not a necessary T, but you're bringing your racket across, this is an absolute killer. And I'll explain why in a second. But if you're doing it, you gotta stop now. You gotta keep watching this video. Because if you don't correct this mistake, you are going to limit your forehand power, consistency, and spin for the rest of your career. And we don't want that. So let's get started. Why is this so, so bad? Well, let's start with this one principle first. And I, I, I've done a lot of research on this and I truly, truly believe it. That all hitting a stroke is, is transferring power from the ground to the ball, okay? One more time. All hitting a forehand or backhand or anything, but we're focusing on the forehand, is hitting or taking energy from the ground and pushing it forward. And the reason why this is so insidious, the dreaded T is, guess what? You can't take the power from the ground and push it forward. So what I mean by this is this. If I put my racket down and hold my hand up in this position here, this is a great position for making contact with the ball. And I'll explain. What I mean by that is if I was going to push up against the wall, this is where my hand would be. Because now I can take the force from my legs and push through my arms, right? I could still do that here. I could still do it having it bent here. All these places are really good. But can I really push on a wall from out here? No. Your body, your chest, and your shoulders aren't behind. So guess what? This is what's going to happen. So you're saying, why, how does this relate to a tennis forehand? Well, I'll show you. When you start with the dreaded T, even if your arms are crossing this like this, what happens when you pull your racket into contact? It's too far away, so you can't push that power. When you do see arms extended, you probably see it a little bit closer and a little bit more in front of the body. This and this are two very big different things. And when you see it from this side, you can really see how my shoulder and the arm is almost behind here. If you're hitting the ball using the dreaded T, this is what's gonna happen. Now sometimes you may see players take the racket back in the dreaded T, and what they do, what they figured out to do, is swing a little faster to get it to catch up and get to this position before they start rotating. So they're taking the racket back like this, and then they're trying to bring it forward fast enough to get in this pushing position. And this is why the dreaded T is so sit insidious because it'll prevent you from feeling how it feels to really hit and have your force behind the ball. So what's the fix? The fix is just like we did before, starting with your hand in a pushing position and getting really good at understanding how can we push the force from the ground through my arms. And so the very first part about this is just getting to a habit of pushing and then feeling like if this is a wall, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take my back leg here because I'm hitting a forehand and I'm gonna try to push through and push forward. So if you wanna know a drill just to start doing this and feeling it better, it's just to start with your hands in front, just like this. Put your right leg if you're right-handed because I wanna get the force coming from my right leg. And all I want you to do is load that right leg and push forward. This seems really weird. You're like, why would I push forward? And push forward but you're like, this isn't a forehand, just stick with it for a while. And push forward, get that sensation first before you do anything. So once you, once you have that feeling of pushing forward, what do we do? How do we incorporate this with our swing? I'll show you right now. So now, I'll take my hands, I'll put them out just like I had it, but now I'm gonna turn my racket in this fashion. So, what do we need to do from here to take the power from the ground and push it forward? Just like I was loading my leg and pushing forward, yeah, I could probably hit a ball like that, but I just needed to add in some rotation. So, if I need to add in rotation, all I'm gonna do is to take a step back and bingo. Look where my racket is. It's in front of my body. Even if it was bent, even if my elbow is here, it's in front of my body here. If you take it behind you, you gotta make it catch up because we get back to the dreaded T. We don't want that. So you see some coaches say, get your elbows out, have your racket here, making sure your racket's away from you, or almost like saying there's a wall here, don't take your racket behind the wall. Basically, they're trying to make sure you get out of the dreaded T, you're in this pushing position. So if I'm here, hands in front, I'm just gonna set my racket down like that, and all I'm gonna do is take that step back to push, my arms in front of me, all I have to do is rotate and push now. 
you'll notice the difference of when I'm rotating and pushing, I'm gonna have my weight going through the ball compared to, this is the dreaded T, I'm gonna take that weight back and what you're feeling is you don't feel the same thing. There's a disconnection between the weight you're gonna push through your legs, to your hips, to your torso, to your shoulder, compared to when you have the right positioning here, okay? So the drill I want you to do is really simple. Grab a couple balls and all we're gonna do is drop it here and we're gonna push through, making sure that we're in this position. Now, one quick note, when we're in this position, it's different for everybody. You see the pros on TV and see, see Roger Federer fully extended. You see Djokovic bent. You see some people bent in here. Now there's a couple things that'll make it the difference, which is personal preference and grip. Um, you see Roger Federer with an Eastern grip is way out, but you also see Nadal with more of a semi-Western grip way out. Sometimes when you have a little bit more of a semi-Western grip or a Western grip, you see more bend, but it's not all the time. So don't get caught in a trap of like thinking that my forehand has to look like Roger Federer out here. It's really, where do you feel the strength from? I've seen guys with uh, Western grips that tend to hit more extended. They have a little bit of bend, but not a full bend. So don't get caught up in like, I have to look here or here. The key and this is the thing, cosmetics from fundamentals and key, is that we have to be in a position which allows us to push our weight forward, which means your hand has to be somewhere, in a sense, behind your shoulder so it feels comfortable to push through the ball so we can take that weight and transfer it forward. So now I got a couple balls, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Put your hand in front, get out of the tee. Put your hand in front, coil, and when we coil, we're gonna put our weight on our back foot. All I'm gonna do is push forward feels so much stronger than if my hand's here and I'm turning and what happens is you're extending and you lose all that ability to force the power through the stroke. You've got to make sure you do this. So all we're going to sit here and do, practice, load, and push, okay? Load and push, okay? If you're having trouble where you still take the racket back too far, really make sure when you load and you rotate that you're keeping the hand in front of your belly button, meaning that as I take the racket back, when I do this with a lot of players, they go like this. They take the racket back and look where my hand is, okay? My hand should be right here, but instead it's here. So you have to really make sure you focus on keeping the hand even with the belly button. It could be somewhere around here, okay? But we're not gonna take it off. Now you do see players take the racket back a little bit like here and it's away from the belly button, but when they come back around here, look what's leading. Okay, we're in this position where we're in this pushing position and we're gonna redirect it with rotation and redirecting that weight or that power and the energy through the ball. Okay, just like that. And you can do it even if you're doing, let's say, a open stance like I'm doing it here. You can do it with a neutral stance because now I'm gonna do the exact same thing where I'm pushing my weight through. And so this is so important. If you understand the core fundamentals of the stroke, you gotta know that you gotta take the, the energy that you create by storing it in your legs and push it through your hand, through rotation and using your body. This is the fundamentals. You can get caught up in the cosmetics of, yeah, players are doing this and they're doing that and they're doing this, but when it comes down to it, you'll start seeing contact, same thing. You're gonna see that arm in that comfortable position, not out here. You don't see any pro hitting forehands out here. It's all here because they're pushing through the ball and that's what's important. If you wanna know more about how to rotate, go watch this video somewhere around here and it'll help you learn how to rotate because that's the key. Now that you understand and getting out of that dreaded T and having your hand here, now it comes down to rotation and loading weight. If you want to hit the ball harder and create more racketed speed, it's more about how you're using your legs and the power you get from the ground to get the ball or the racket to move faster to hit the ball. So I hope this is helpful. I'll see you in the next video.